Hello friends, I'm Monique and I'm back today with a new layout for Pear Tree Cut Files. Today I'm going to be creating this colourful page using two of the lovely cut files from the Valentine's Day bundle. When I first saw this bundle, I just fell in love with this horizontal heart um, cluster and I've cut it out in various sizes and multiple times because I want to layer them across my page. So the largest one I've cut out once and I'm going to back it with this lovely floral um, with various different colors going diagonally across the back. And to make it really, really simple to back this, I'm just adding some glue, um, some Nouveau, deluxe adhesive uh, my favorite liquid adhesive and I'm just adding that to the back of the cut file and sticking it straight down on top of the pattern paper and because I'm just using one sheet of pattern paper to back the cut file rather than backing each little heart with individual pieces of pattern paper it's really really easy just to cut around the edges um, rather than cutting it out first and then then placing the cut file on top so I find this to be an, an easier option for me. Now I want to add some mixed media to the background so I'm just going to make a little mark um, where this cut file is going to be placed and then I've got my distress ink pads, my mini distress ink pads and I'm going to use those just to swipe some colour across the background um, going kind of in line with the, the patterned paper that is on those hearts. So I've got four different colours of the distress inks which I'm going to be using just to coordinate with that patterned paper. I'm just using um, mustard seed here and then some mowed lawn. The blue that I use is um, tumbled glass which is a little bit lighter than the patterned paper however I do add in a touch of prize ribbon as well which you'll you'll see in a little bit and the ready corally tone that I use is abandoned coral so um, these were my closest matches to the pattern paper and I think that they work really really well so here I'm just coming in with the prize ribbon this is a distress oxide um, I don't have that in a distress ink but it works perfectly um, along with the other one and I'm able to mix those colors together so it doesn't look amazing just now <laughs> but in a moment I'm going to come in in with my paint brushes and just loosen up that ink a little bit to give a watercolor effect. I really do love the versatility of the Distress um, products and um, I've really made so much use of my Distress inks and I'm busy building up my collection of Distress Oxides and then I'm sure I'll find another Distress product that I need as well. <laughs> um, so here I've got um, just some plain water and my paintbrush and I'm just kind of dabbing at the center of the ink coloring there just so that when I add the cut file on top it looks like those colors are kind of melting out of the cut file and I do want to leave some of those swoosh marks intact from where I've smeared the ink pads just for a little bit of added interest and visual texture. Now I'm going to work a little bit on the blue and you can see that once you add the water it mixes the lighter and the darker blue together just to create a new um, shade which matches that pattern paper really really well so I'm, I'm very happy with, with how those colors have worked out. Now I've got this lovely little um, heart stencil also from Pear Tree Cut Files and I'm just going to be going over it with some white texture paste. This is a Ranger texture paste and I love using it. It dries so quickly. Um, it isn't totally opaque. Um, I to be fair, I've just put a, quite a thin smear on. I think if I'd put a much thicker layer on, it would be more opaque. So it does allow a little bit of that color to peek through, which I really like in this instance. So now with this cut file, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of texture. So I've poked some holes just on the inside of that cut file, on the patterned paper rather than the actual cut file. And I've just done a simple back stitch with um, six strands of white embroidery thread. So if you're using DMC, your anchor embroidery thread it's just the full bundle of, of threads um, I've not split up the individual strands at all and um, I just love the extra bit of texture and interest that that adds so now I'm just having a little play I've got three photos from my twins birthday party and I'm just trying to see where I'd like these to go. They some family photos, two are with me with each of my kitties and then one's a family photo um, with their dad as well. And I'm just having a little play really, just to see, see how best it works. Now, I'd originally thought this is how I was going to, to lay it all out. However, the title cut file, which I've decided to use, 
um, which is also from the lovely Valentine's Day bundle. Um, the pattern paper I've cut it from doesn't really stand out very much, so I'm just trying to find the best placement for it so that it stands out a bit better. So I'm going to have a little think, and in the meantime, I'm going to stick down all the other horizontal hearts um, in place on top of the background. So I'm going to stick them directly on top of that background. I want them to be um, quite subtle and just to add a little bit of interest to the background as well. So as you can see, I've cut them in various sizes and now this one I'm just going to trim some of the cut file off. Um, I noticed that behind the, the title piece, when that cut file was showing behind it, it just kind of added a little bit of visual confusion in the background. So there's already quite a lot going on with the stenciling and all the colour and I just decided that just trimming off that cut file so it didn't extend into the centre behind the title piece and that's just going to help minimise any clutter in the background, unnecessary clutter that's not really contributing to the layout. So um, now I'm just going to raise the, the back to cut files up just to add a little bit of height and dimension. So I'm just using some craft foam which I'm adding some double sided um, adhesive tape to and then I'm going to plonk that down in the middle in the place and um, start layering everything around it. I often tend to gravitate towards working along the diagonal. I think especially with that patterned paper which has got a diagonal stripe of colour and it would just seem natural to add the diagonal colour in the background and then to continue to work along that diagonal as I embellish as well. Now a big part of creating layouts is just kind of fiddling and, and seeing where bits and pieces work. So I've taken the other little cut off piece of that cut file and I'm just adding it onto the right side of where I want the title piece over there and I really just love the, the subtlety of the, those unbacked cut files on top of that colourful background. So I'm finding that that title piece is just getting kind of lost in the background there and I need to do something to it. So I've kind of regret cutting it in the, the pattern paper that I've chosen. Um, I love that sheet of pattern paper, however, it's just not standing out um, from, from the bright colours in the background and the floral pattern paper that I've already used. Um, the collection that I've used here is the Reaching Out Collection by Jen Hadfield and I've only just got a few sheets of pattern and paper from this collection and um, so I finally put them to good use. Now um, after having a little think about what to do with this cut file I really didn't want to cut it again. I didn't want to waste this um, pattern paper so I've decided to add some ink to it. So I've used the same abandoned coral that I used in the background and I've just inked the the word you and part of the word love just the the outline of it and kind of like an ombre effect and it really just helps it stand out that little bit more and I'm much happier with, with how that looks. Now I'm using my favourite double sided foam adhesive strips from scrapbook.com just to raise up each of these little letters from that title piece and I'm going to use some craft foam behind the the photo that I've added in there. I decided after fiddling with the photos for ages that the family photo of the four of us will go perfectly. It fitted really, really perfectly inside the O from Love. So I made a few adjustments. The two photos um, on the left of the cut file that I'd originally planned just weren't working. Um, I wanted that cut file to be more centered. So I decided to, to add that little photo in the O and that works so much better. And then the two little photos of me with each of my kitties at the bottom works quite nicely. So I've distressed the edges of each of the letters of the word love from the title cut file and now I want to back those little photos with a few sheets of pattern paper from the collection just to add a little bit of extra interest. I'm going to add three little squares of pattern paper behind each photo and all with distressed edges. So I cut the squares ever so slightly bigger than each of the photos. Um, I distress the edges and then I layer them on top of each other, slightly offset so that you can see a little bit of each of the pattern papers and for a little bit of interest. My favorite tool for distressing edges are my scissors. <laughs> I find I get the most effective distressed edge and then I can just keep going back over and over depending on how distressed I want those edges to be. So scissors always work best for me. 
Now, once I've got those all stuck down and I'm happy with how I've positioned all those mats and, the, and getting just the right place for each of those photos, it's going to be time to start to add some extra decoration to this page. So now I've got some off cuts of this lovely floral pattern paper and I've got two floral punches, um, one slightly bigger and one's a little bit smaller and I'm just punching out a whole bunch of flowers and I want to dot those along the background, along that horizontal tone on tone just for extra prettiness and um, decoration and lots of extra interest. So this is a great way to use up all those little off cuts and scrap pieces that are funny shapes that are a little bit awkward to, to add to the leftover bits of paper. So I've managed to use up most of those by punching out lots of little flowers. Now it just felt like there was something missing from those little punched out flowers. So I've got some of these, of these lovely little rainbow gems um, in various sizes just to add to the center and um, that just finishes them off perfectly. So I don't want any really strong colors. I kind of just want them to blend in. Um, but just really just defining the center of each of those flowers. And now I really am all fingers and thumbs when it comes to using tweezers. I feel like my fingers don't pick up the little things really easily, but I really struggle to use tweezers as well. So um, I end up using a combination of fingers and tweezers and everything gets stuck to the glue and this is my most fiddliest part of a layout. Now I want to add some little soft vellum flowers so I'm using the same punches and just punching out some little vellum flowers and I just love the subtlety of those and the interest that those add. I'm nearly finished I do just come in with a few of those sparkly little gems and dot those about the page as well again on the horizontal and vellum is always a tricky one to to stick down and in the past I've always managed to cover up the the double-sided tape marks by um, adding it on where it's just going to be tucking underneath something or where something's going to be covering up but it's not so easy on on this layout because I don't want to add um, any gems or anything on top of those vellum hearts so I just put a teeny tiny little the tiniest piece of the the double-sided adhesive and put that on the back and it's not very noticeable I think if you're going up close you'll see it um, but just to the naked eye looking at the page you you don't really notice it so I'm okay with that now um, I've got this um, two inch by two inch um, big sheet of pattern paper well it's 12 inch by 12 inch but full of the two by two squares and I'm just trying to use some of them um, to fussy cut some bits and pieces so that I've got some ephemera to add to this page because I don't have any ephemera from this collection. So I've managed to find some florals and a cute little sunshine which I've got peeking out from behind the, the O from the, the word love in the title and now there's this other little floral from one of the little squares just so that I can add a few little bits around for, for extra interest and just to build on it. I just didn't feel it was quite finished yet. Now one of the little squares on the piece of pattern paper said let's party and if you were just to look at this page you wouldn't know it's about a party. I've just gone for um, a cute sentiment title which goes with how I feel about my family um, and lots of colours but it is at the end of the day the photo photos are from a party so I thought that little piece that says let's party kind of is a little nod to what was actually happening at the time that these photos were taken so um, I quite like that that added in there tucked behind that group photo at the top. Now I'm just going to go in and stick down all those little florals make sure that they're all in place and I do go in off camera and add in a few little pear tree pieces some gorgeous little felt hearts which I just add to the background tone on tone along that horizontal and you'll be able to see those in just a moment when I show you a close-up. Now you can get all the bits and pieces and th this lovely Valentine's bundle of cut files from Pear Tree Cut Files. I'll link them up for you below. You get 10 gorgeous cut files all with kind of a love theme but as you can see from my layout here today it does not have to be on a Valentine's Day layout to use these cut files. They are all beautiful and can be used for a multitude of, of layouts, not just love themed. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you've seen something that inspires you to get creative or seen a new idea or two that you'd like to try out. Please do drop me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd be so grateful if you subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Instagram at Handmade Happy by Monique. As always, I've linked everything up for you below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.